Okay, well, I was just gonna start the vlog and coincidentally I just got a YouTube alert uh, when you guys posted a comment here about that uh, CBC uh, report about that fake drone video. Uh, let me just read this a little bit here, just so I know what I'm talking about rather or what the response was a little bit. I'll post the uh, full uh, snippet here as well on the video just so everyone else can see. I'm guessing from uh, skimming over this in the top, uh, this is basically a template response. I'm guessing everyone that submitted a complaint probably got this uh, similar uh, response. Uh, but they basically say here, like uh, one of the quotes they said, uh, where for amateur users, it has increased the potential for deadly collisions. An incident such as this, one recorded by a passenger flying into New York City. Uh, basically, that was the one with the fake uh, drone footage. Um, so from what I gather here, it says they essentially admit uh, they verified it was fake. <laughs> I actually know a lot of you out there are probably saying, well, I could have told you that just by watching the video. This basically confirms why I couldn't see it uh, live afterwards or in another showing uh, because they said here, once someone noticed, notified them rather in the public that um, there was an error, they immediately verified that it was fake and then they prevented like the story from airing, I guess additionally into the uh, other news segments and as well there was no um, news report of it online which explains why I couldn't find it. So I guess that shows them anyways, it works. <laughs> like when regular people basically just send out all your complaints and in this case it's really embarrassing, um, they will admit that they're wrong. Although I'm still really curious whether or not they will do the more neutral piece so to speak, a neutral news piece on recreational drone flyers, the positive side of it, and just how it's affecting the regular per people rather after this. They even said here, after the story aired, we received a viewer comment questioning the authenticity of the collision footage. Makes me wonder if it was one of you guys, because you guys were pretty fast in uh, pointing this out. Actually, the ending statement of this uh, message is actually interesting. It says, however, I can reassure you that this was not knowing uh, use of false footage or an attempt to create made-up facts or cause a fear with the public. Uh, that's kind of interesting uh, because I know that's what a lot of people think, for example, that a lot of the media, they actually do this on purpose to kind of push like a narrative. And it makes me wonder, um, even after all this, uh, like, you know, like even I said mistakes happen, but I'm curious, after this experience, are the news organizations going to do pieces that are a little bit more neutral, for example? Like I said before, actually going out there, talking to recreational flyers, see how it affects them, not using sensational headlines like this. Like, I haven't seen it personally, because even as I said, uh, most of the interviews I've seen, they're always with commercial flyers saying, yeah, like recreational flyers, those guys are dangerous and all that. Like, where's the neutral reporting in that sense? So let's see if they change. Action speaks louder than words. When they say this too, uh, we seek out the truth in all matters of public interest. Actually, I found out something kind of funny with Transfer Canada today, so it makes me wonder. Uh, I think it's only going to be like people like us, for example, like reading about and keeping updated with drone news that's going to really pay attention to this, but I'll be interested if the media pays attention to this. <laughs> you guys will see, it's kind of funny. I did get an update about my DJI uh, battery the, for the Mavic Pro, and they sent me an email saying they saw the video, they confirmed it, and yeah, they'll send me a slip, I guess just like last time, they'll probably send me a UPS label and I'll have to bring it back and ship it out again to see uh, how it goes. And what I was thinking was they sent me um, this uh, before everything's done yet, because I haven't, again, I haven't received the UPS uh, email. They sent me an email asking me to fill out uh, this survey to rate the customer satisfaction. And I actually didn't fill it out yet because, you know, not everything's done, but I always wonder nowadays, like when I fill out surveys, like what's going on in the back end? How much is this going to affect the employee? Because I've actually worked in a retail store before and I know like many times those surveys can actually affect employees a lot. It made me think too many times like these surveys and these numbers, they actually may not mean what you think they do because a lot of people may be manipulating the data in some way. Like for uh, my personal experience, which is kind of shocking before, like um, the surveys that print out like in those receipts, if you guys ever got them, like please fill out these surveys. Like for the store I was with before, uh, they actually, uh, when they when they printed out, they were telling people like, oh, make the customer feel like they won the lottery ticket and try to get them to fill out this survey right on the store. And what the manager would do was they'd get the customer to sit in front of the computer like when it printed out, again, making them feel like they won the lottery. They'd give them like a soda or whatever beside them, like, okay, take your time. If you're perfectly happy, rate me a perfect and all that. 
And the reason they did that is because the store manager's uh, salary or bonus is tied to customer satisfaction rating. So when the head office sees it, they're like, oh, wow, fantastic. You guys keep getting like perfect scores. So I guess they get more bonuses. Like ultimately they found out like the head office and they were like, you know, disciplined for it. But again, that just showed me how misleading like, you know, surveys like these can be in terms of the numbers and the data. And speaking about data, that leads me to this uh, Transport Canada thing I learned today, which was kind of funny. Oh, you guys know what happened when we talk about Transport Canada and stuff. <laughs> now, to my knowledge, one of the narrative to promote uh, basically the ban, if that's what you want to call it, of recreational drone flyers uh, for the most part, is a narrative that, you know, the government is getting so many more complaints of uh, recreational drone flyers flying in an irresponsible manner. It's just getting like out of control, so you have to dump out these interim orders. So it made me kind of curious, uh, well, let's see, like, um, how do you actually get people to report uh, drone incidents as an example, as a general public? So as you can see here on the official uh, government site, they actually have like this uh, page and a form which basically encourages people to like here, report unsafe drone use. Now this is kind of interesting because there's a quote here saying, if you think someone is flying a drone in an irresponsible manner without a permit. Now this is wrong for uh, two reasons in my opinion, or weird rather. Honestly, how can a regular person tell if someone has a permit or not? Like in terms of things like that SFOC, where commercial uh, drone pilots use to fly their drones for commercial reasons. How do you know by seeing something in the air whether or not that guy has a permit? It would be almost like me saying, if you think someone's driving the car without a driver's license, then you know, fill out this form. Like, how do I know just by looking at it? <laughs> can I just assume every car here, like people, I can just say, oh, I think he doesn't have a driver's license. I think he doesn't have a driver's license, so I better fill out this form. Like, how, what do you base this on? <laughs> In that sense, it makes no sense. Now, the other thing that made me wonder about this is because here it kind of says, um, if you think someone's flying in an irresponsible manner without a permit. So what are you saying? So you're telling me if like say a commercial drone flyer with a permit is flying irresponsibly in a, you know, a destructive way or whatever, you're telling me people just sit there like, okay, well you have a permit, like go ahead, fly crazy. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, a commercial pilot can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming when you get permits like those SFOCs and stuff like that, you don't have like a Transfer Canada employee standing next to you like during your shoot to make sure you're doing everything responsibly. So why would you give like even like a commercial flyer the exemption like from a regular citizen reporting them if they think they're doing something dangerous in that case? Why the bias to the recreational flyer? I mean, I would think like anything in life, whether you're the CEO of like a large corporation or a politician that's high ranking, I mean, they could do something wrong. I mean, that should not exempt them from the laws, so to speak, if this is all truly about safety and the public concern. As you scroll down, I actually find this point a little bit funny because they ask you, if possible, gather evidence such as photos, screenshots, or videos. Now that makes sense. I mean, if you see like the drone in the air, you can take a picture of it if you think they're flying illegally in some ways. But what if that drone, like again, the guy's flying illegally anyways, like say he's flying too high and all you see is a little dot. What can the regular person get with their like regular, I don't know, smartphone camera or something like that? Actually, in many ways, that's kind of funny how like this example, your law is basically stopping the law abiding citizen who has potentially the resources or the drone to help you like get the photos and videos. But I can't because I have to abide by the law. Whereas that guy, you know, he's breaking the law. He can continue flying there and no one will know because no one has the equipment like in the area to take like evidence of it. Now, one of the things that's kind of concerning about this form is how for the most part, it seems like they don't really require much in terms of a person uh, to know what they're talking about, if that makes sense, to report a drone. Like, it seems like they can write in like as much garbage or false information as they want and they'll still treat it as a report. I mean, the funny example here, just again, with how little information they actually need from the person, like here, there's a category, it says description of the drone and they want you to like check off like which drone kind of looks like which to categorize like the type that the person saw. And there's one here that the option says, not sure. So you're telling me you saw a drone, but then you can't tell me like necessarily how it looks like shape wise or anything like that. Because that makes me think again with that picture, like one of my favorite pictures, like, oh, this is a drone. This is a drone, like in terms of a bird, a balloon. Like, how do you know? I mean, if the person can't even tell a description of that, why should they be filing like a report in general if they can't even have any type of visual description of what it looked like? I mean, it'd be almost like me trying to identify a car. Can you tell me what the car looked like? I don't know. Can you tell me how many wheels it had? I don't know, not sure. I mean, I've even shown those examples about before, like when you're really that high up in the air, even from the drone's perspective, like a lot of people, they look like a little dot. 
or vice versa, when you're looking at it from the ground and up and the thing's really high, like you don't really don't really know what it is exactly. It could be a bird, you never know. Now you may be thinking, okay, well, I'm just like, you know, over exaggerating. That's just one little point that they can like uh, leave out, for example, to report a quote drone, like a safety, whatever it concern. Oh boy, you guys just see what I tested on this site. So what I did was I actually I uh, just scrolled through the page. I'm gonna show you here. And I went down, I wanted to see if I can actually submit this form without, you know, entering anything. And guess what? You can submit a complaint or a concern without actually filling anything in. Good lord, you're telling me uh, in terms of people filing concerns and complaints, they can just click the button submit, 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 submit? Then what are you going to see in the back end? Look at this, we got 100 complaints today. There's no information, but there's still complaints. So what's the point of having that data? Is this so you can pat yourself in the back and tell the public to justify these really stupid uh, recreational drone laws to say we're doing a good job, look at all these complaints we got, now we're handling it with these laws. Oh god, it just reminds me of again like that story about the surveys like in the company I said where people were kind of fudging the numbers just to prove their point. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this to be used as the next narrative. Ever since we launched the website and basically brought out these laws, we've got tons and tons and millions of complaints through the website. Well, I guess on the bright side, the rest of the world can learn from us. Don't be like these fear-mongering government that makes these laws like that, that basically discourages people from using a technology instead of embracing it and working and educating people about it. Otherwise, I guess like here, you'll fall behind in the times, even when it comes to stuff like a website. <laughs> But keep in mind, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they basically just screwed up technically in terms of uh, having the required field forms, like to make it mandatory. And to me anyways, this is just further proof how rushed out these laws were with no thoughts and in a completely disorganized fashion. Alright, see you guys later.